Hi, this is Gary from Next Actions. There's lots of different ways to plan. All of these, well, they've got their own strengths and weaknesses. Join me now and we'll discuss the SAW technique. This is a strength-based technique that allows you to plan and build to grow your business. One of the most common analysis tools people use, it's the SWOT analysis, and we've covered that in a previous video. This, it stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. This technique, well, it's often run from the top down. That means that the people doing the analysis and making the decisions, they're generally managers and executives. It also focuses on weaknesses and threats, and it looks at ways to mitigate these. This, well, it's fine, but the problem that you have, if you're focusing on just the negatives, then you're gonna come up with a limited set of options. These, they're all focused on fixing the perceptions of managers and executives. The SAW technique, well, it flips this on its head. Using the SAW technique, you make the decision making by using a bottom up method. You engage the people doing the work. You engage your customers. You engage the whole organization in the planning activity. This technique, well, it's also focused on building on your current strengths. It's about taking what's already working well and then making it even better. So it's very much focused on producing actions that you can then take in your business to deliver results. So what does SAW stand for? Well, it's another acronym. It stands for strengths, opportunities, aspirations, and results. These, they're often presented in a two by two grid, very similar to the SWOT method. The top left, this is where you list out your strengths. It's where you bring out what the organization does well. Here, you'll be asking questions like, what do we do well? What have we accomplished? What makes us stand out? What are we proud of? The bottom left, this is the opportunities. These are the things that you can see coming up. Here, you would list things that you can leverage to increase your current success. You're focusing on things that you can improve, things like profitability, market share. Here, well, you'll ask questions like, are there any partnerships that can be set up to increase success? What trends are in the market that are aligned with our strengths? From the SWOT analysis, are there any threats that can be reframed to become opportunities? Are there any gaps in the market that we can step into? The top right, this it's where you detail your aspirations. It's your vision for the future. It's where you want to be. It's how you want to build on your strengths so that you can challenge and improve on the current state of your business. Some questions here, they include, what do we want to achieve? How can we make a difference to others? What are our passions? How can we build on these? What strategies and actions do we need so we can become that future vision? Then the bottom right, this is where you put the results that you want. It's a list of measures that you can use to show that you have met your aspirations. Here, you'll include questions like, how will we know we've succeeded? What does success look like? What does it feel like? Here, visualization is key. The visualization tool is really important to help you get the results you deserve. We can also put in the results any SMART goals that we can come up with. Remember, the SMART goals, they're specific, they're measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound. To get the most from the SAW technique, I recommend you use the five eyes method. This is initiate. Here, you're kicking off the process. You're defining the terms of reference. This is, what are you going to be looking at? You also decide 
who's going to be involved and you arrange any sessions that you're going to need to run the process. Inquire. Here you have sessions to answer the questions to start filling out the grid. These they're likely to be brainstorming sessions and let's be honest you're going to need more than one of them. You're starting to explore the grid sections and you're asking the questions that you need to so that you can dig down deeper and fully understand where you are and where you want to go. You're trying to bring out as much of the good that there is in your business. You're trying to uncover and define all your current strengths. In this part, you'll mainly be filling out the strengths and opportunity grids. You might put something into the other two grids, but the focus here, what are your strengths? What are your opportunities? Imagine. This part, this is actually fairly short. It could only be a couple of hours. What you're doing is you're taking the results from that previous stage and you're collating them together. So you've now got one big picture from all the sessions that you've had. You take this picture and you start to look at the possibilities. This is where I really encourage wild ideas. Start thinking right outside that box. Don't discard these wild ideas. These are usually where the best results come from. You build on the idea, the results flow. In this part, you're going to be filling out the aspirations and the results box. You're going to be producing the vision. You're going to be producing the results that you want. Innovate. This is actually the planning phase. You're looking at the aspirations and the results and you're starting to come up with the list of actions that need to be taken to move you from where you are now to where you want to be. I cannot overstress the importance of coming up with reasonable actions. When you're coming up with these actions, make sure you're looking at your existing strengths and how you can build on them to move you forward. Inspire to implement. This section, it's all about doing the work. You're following the action plan you're tracking the results. You're monitoring how each aspiration is being met. Make sure you spend a bit of time here and celebrate successes. It's something which we don't do often enough. As you go through this phase, you're going to start to get the results you deserve. Do you have a problem you can use the saw technique with? If you do, please drop a comment below. If you liked this video, please hit that like button. Do you know anyone who would benefit from the video? Why not share it with them now? And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button so that you get new videos as I release them. To summarize, the SAW technique is a planning tool that builds on your existing strengths. You can use it to come up with a plan that is based on what you do well. So, it stands for strengths, opportunities, aspirations, and results. You implement this using the five eyes method. Initiate, inquire, imagine, innovate, and then inspire to implement. Remember, this is all about building on your existing strengths. It doesn't focus on weaknesses and threats, so you may miss out on some key things because you're only looking at the strengths. Due to this, I recommend that you use SAW and SWOT together when you're doing your planning. These two techniques, they complement each other. They give you a fuller picture than if you were using only one. If you have a problem that you're struggling with, why not contact me so we can chat about how SAW and SWOT can help you to solve that problem. By working together, you can get the results you deserve. Please reach out to me on 0415 591 672. I'm based in Australia, so please use the international dialing code plus 61 if calling from another country. You can also email me on Gary at nextactions.com.au or visit nextactions.com.au where you'll find a link to book a free, short, introductory call. 
Do you have any topics that you'd like me to cover? If you do, please drop a comment below and I'll add it to the list of upcoming videos. Don't forget, like the video, subscribe to the channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.